So the stock market was a bit of a bumpy ride today here on Friday. There's still a lot of uncertainty about the Israel and Iran war and the US involvement in the war. We have a few different stocks we're gonna look at today. So we're gonna look at the chart for IonQ. We're gonna look at two quantum cybersecurity plays Arkit Quantum, ARQQ, and Seal SQ, ticker symbol LAS. We're gonna take a quick look at Airship, AISP, and Big Bear AI, BBAI. So let's jump in. So as we can see, the S&P was down today, the NASDAQ was down, the Russell was down, VIX cooled off a little bit, gold was down, Dow barely eked out a gain. It was a pretty flat day with some sell-off through the market. If we look at the stock heat map, some of the big tech companies got hit pretty hard today. Google is down 4%, Meta was down 2%, Nvidia 1%. We see that Apple actually had a 2% day and Apple's been down quite a bit lately. If we look at our quantum watch list, most of our quantum watch list is red. However, ARQQ, this Arkit quantum cybersecurity company based out of Europe, and Seal SQ LAS, also based in Europe and also focused on quantum cybersecurity, posted good gains even in a fairly turbulent market with lots of sell off. So we can see lots of tickers down the line. D Wave was actually green most of the day, but ended up slightly in the red. And we see that quantum emotion and Ion Q both posted gain. So just about a month ago, we got this article where a Google researcher had lowered the quantum bar to crack RSA encryption. So this researcher from Google Quantum AI estimated that breaking RSA 2048 encryption would be achieved in under a week using fewer than 1 million noisy qubits, sharply reducing previous estimates. The analysis relies on algorithmic improvements and efficient system designs, including approximate arithmetic and compressed error correction layouts. So what's happened here is the algorithms have improved greatly, which means that many, many less qubits are required. And there are some estimates that hacking of RSA encryption is closer and closer than people think. So these quantum cybersecurity plays, specifically LAES, and Arkit are seeing some nice movements. Let's look at Arkit. This stock has been on an absolute tear. Year to date, it looks like, oh, only 7%, but in the last year, it's up 400%. In the past six months, it's up 64%. In the past month, it's up 60%. And even the last five days, it's at 62% with some pretty strong price action. So if we go into the chart and we kind of look where this rally started, so it looks like this rally really started around May. And the stock in April actually had touched $10 a share and we closed today at $41 a share. So the stock has 4X since its April lows, but the real volume and the big candles have really come in more recently on Arkit. So if we look back a year, we know that Arkit at one point had touched $52 and it seems to be marching its way back up. We know that earnings weren't particularly good for Arkit, but their defense collaboration with Oracle has been a huge proponent of this move. So really from this May 15th point to now, if we're just to measure out the return, this is a 180% move. And the stock in the last five days has just been stair-stepping up. Lots of volume came in on the 18th and the price action remains pretty bullish on Arcade Quantum. So Seal SQ closed today above 388. That's the yellow line there. And if you kind of look closely here in this last number of days, we can see that 388 consistently acts as resistance, but once LAS is able to get over 388, then it can also use 388 as support. So the fact that we've closed above 388 
And we've recently had some bullish price action in this rally that took us all the way to 450. Looks really good for the stock. If we go back six months, so now we're looking at four hour candles for six months. And LES had a nice pop with the quantum euphoria in December of 2024 after Willow. It dropped down pretty significantly and then sold off into the $2 price range. And then recently, it's been making its move potentially back to the upside. So we can see that there's a trend forming here where it looks like the stock wants to start walking back up. Will it move explosively as it has in the past is the question because it has shown on this four hour chart that it has the ability to move explosively. So could we see a candle like this or will we see continued sort of sideways price action? So if we look back to May when this rally started and we see the wick touches on this imaginary rising support, this line on the chart, we can see that this is fairly close. First of all, we're above the critical 388. We're also hovering in this area of rising support. So what that means is we have seen growth stocks, especially lately in our market, have nice bounces off support. So it does look quite bullish for LAS, especially if this theme of quantum cybersecurity continues to accelerate. Let's look at IonQ. So IonQ has an interesting story. And what we know is that they've accelerated their roadmap significantly. I'm going to put up the thumbnail on the screen, but I recommend anybody who's looking into quantum peer plays watches the video that I made on INQ and their acquisition of Oxford Ionics and LightSync because that is a game changer for this company. Now, what we see is that at its highest point, we were around 50 to $55 for INQ and there's been sell off with the quantum crash, sell off with tariffs and when the whole market washed out, and then we had this incredible 40% day not too long ago. On the four hour chart, this is still presenting to me as a bull flag. We have a clear flagpole here. We have some consolidation. And the tighter this consolidation gets, the more likely we are to see some sort of move to the upside. Now, if macro changes or if the market conditions change and if we're no longer in a bull market, this could easily sell down to former areas of support. So in a more bearish case, if INQ is continuing to sell down, it looks like it's been caught a couple times at this 36. It could also move back down to 28 if market conditions change or if some sort of black swan event specifically happens for this company. All right, let's take a look at Airship. Covered Airship in a while. So Airship AI is basically a small, very small company who desperately needs a new website, but they have some cool products and they're a relatively inexpensive AI play when there's lots of AI growth as, as a theme. So what first attracted me me to the company, I'm not going to lie, it's their logo. That is the coolest logo I think I've ever seen for an AI company. Just a quick look at Airship AI on the balance sheet. So they have been trending higher in their revenues. Their net, net income turned positive. Their free cash flow fell off a cliff. So that's not a good sign. And it looks like with, with the data that ProfitViz has, that they have more cash than debt. So this is a, a very speculative play for me, but I like the AI theme and I like the business that they're in. So Airship, if we look back one year at price history, the highest they've seen is about seven, seven fifty, seven dollars 
And if we go back to April lows, the stock was trading around $3. We can see that recently we've had some really nice candles with Airship AI. And if we get a little closer to the chart, we also see that volume has come in in the recent rally and some nice volume has come in today. Looks like we're just about in the middle of the relative strength index. And we are trading a little bit sideways. This kind of looks a little bit like IonQ's chart. It's not really sure where it's gonna go. There could be a case that there's a bull flag here and maybe Airship wants to push back up. But when it had its initial rally and its initial push up last year, it's kind of cooled off since then. So we're gonna to need to see, I'm following it closely. I am personally invested in Airship and I would love to see uh, where it goes from here. I think the chart's pretty interesting um, and not quite as volatile as some of those other stocks. Speaking of volatility, let's take a look at Big Bear AI. So Big Bear, I think a lot of people, when I started investing in Big Bear, it was way back here, like in November, December of 2024. And I think the big thing that's changed with Big Bear from my perspective is more people just understand what they're doing. They've seen what Palantir has been able to do in the stock market. And they've seen that Big Bear has had a big move in the past and also a big sell-off. And Big Bear has this character in the stock where it, it has some more explosive types of moves. Now, recently we've seen quite a bit of consolidation, which is actually a little bit out of character for Big Bear. So we see in last month, we've had some of those legs up followed by sharp legs down, but really the, the mean or the average of all of this is we've kind of been just trading sideways if we split the difference there around this $4. So we come down to 360 sometimes and we go up to 440 sometimes, but we haven't meaningfully moved. However, if we look at the history of Big Bear, especially in the last couple of years, I'm gonna just draw a horizontal line here. So we can see most of the price history for Big Bear is under this $3 point. So the fact that it's starting to move back into this $4 area and starting to think about going higher to five, six, seven, eight, nine, or 10 is looking quite promising. And if we go back all the way to August of 2024, and we measure the move to now, investors that were in this ticker have already seen a 300% gain. So one caution with Big Bear AI, is historically their their financials haven't been perfect. They have a new CEO. There has been some effort to make those financials better. And they weren't able to post some revenue in the last quarter that will be carried over into this quarter. So what we're starting to see, and I think investors are starting to figure out, is volume is picking up for Big Bear. So even during this explosion, we're starting to get even more volume. So what's gonna to need to happen for Big Bear to move out of this $4 position and look for a five, six or a higher position? They just need a big contract or catalyst or some positive news event. They had some legal issues for a little while and that dragged the stock down a little bit. And they're just waiting patiently for a catalyst. I did find one thing. So back in February 25th of 2025, Big Bear released this statement basically saying their conductor OS will be deployed at the Exercise Talisman Saber 2025. And what does that mean? Well, this is a potential catalyst for Big Bear in a just getting their name out there and showing what's going on. So the scheduled date for this event is from July 13th to August 4th. So this is the article on that. And between July 13th and August 4th, a bunch of military from different countries will get together 
and Big Bear will have a chance to show off its Conductor OS, which is just one pillar of its wider suite of products. So this is an upcoming catalyst for Big Bear. I don't think it's on every investor's radar, but it's coming up. Big Bear is looking very bullish. I'm looking forward to the next quarter of revenue. And I'm also looking forward to what happens at this event. And I think that if you look at the PE ratio of something like Palantir and you look at Big Bear, while they're, there's, they are often compared and they're different companies, Palantir is much, 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 much more expensive than something like Big Bear. Big Bear is looking pretty affordable at this price point. All right, guys. So we just covered five stocks in about 20 minutes. I hope you found this insightful and useful. Do me a huge favor, leave a like, and if you feel like it, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.